Hello students, this is a lecture on Bharat Muni's Rasa theory, which would also serve as an add-on lecture to the classical play by Kalidasa titled Adhikyan Shikundana. Before we come to know what Rasa theory is, we must understand who Bharat Muni was. So, who exactly was Bharat Muni? We do not have any certain information if he was a person, a group, or a cult. We also just have estimates that he lived between 500 BCE and 500 CE. But we know for sure that he was a stalwart of dramaturgy and aesthetics. He is also credited with being the pioneer of Sanskrit poetics and literary theory. Various scholars argue that Bharat Muni is a unanimous name chosen for the voices of several sages, that is Muni, of the nation Bharat. Whenever we use the term Sanskrit poetics, we are definitely cross-referring to a treatise with the same name, which is written by Aristotle, and is on the same issue, that is the mechanism of drama. He is also credited with being the father of literary theory in classical Indian literature. As a theorist, he was the first person to initiate the idea of aesthetic juice in poetry. Poetry being the general term for literature. The word aesthetic juice is to be explained to be a spiritual or an abstract juice. Being students of biology, we certainly know that we have juices in our body, such as blood, such as mucus, such as sweat, various oils that are secreted from our skin, various gastric juices that we have in our body. We have certain physical juices in our body, but then Bharata was the person who marked that there are spiritual or abstract juices in our body too and his theory is based on these abstract juices. His ideas founded grounds for Bhava, Alamkara and Gunariti, which are theoretical concepts which followed the Rasa theory. In his treatise called Nanke Shastra, he dealt with all the forms of Kavya. Kavya again is a word for literature in general. In the classical times, the prosaic literature was not much appreciated. All the literature was written in poetry, or at least in rhythm. <clears throat> Kavya was divided into two parts. First was Shruti, something that you can hear, and second was Drishya, something that you can see. Drishya was also divided into two parts, was dance, and second was Natak. Now, dance included the musical background, but Natak included dialogues. Therefore, it was not much appreciated because it was prosaic in nature. Bharat Muni brought the art of Natya or Natak into the limelight. Because of his treatise, people came to realize the seriousness of drama as an art. His work Natya Shastra is considered, again an estimate, to be written around 1 CE. It is divided into 36 chapters and contains 5,500 shlokas. Chapters 6 and 7 deal with rasa and its elucidation. I use the word elucidation here because rasa is not something that is considered to be extracted, borrowed or procured from something. It is not to be retrieved from an external thing. It is already present in our soul and is just to be realized or accessed with the help of stimuli. The word rasa is also not something that Bharat Muni coined. It was already mentioned in Vedas and Upanishads. But rasa was usually referred for the soul of God. And it said that our soul had a part of rasa. And then there was the soul of God which had a larger part of rasa. And to reach God, we would have to realize the rasas in us. His work Nanti Shastra is a comprehensive treatise on dramaturgy and is sometimes claimed to be a Natya Ved. Now, Natya Ved, the word itself has a story behind it. It is said that various gods approached Lord Brahma, complaining that the Vedas and the Upanishads were for exclusive reading of Brahmans and Kshatriyas. But then, the Vaishyas and Shindras also had to find a medium of entertainment. So, Lord Brahma employed Bharat Muni to write a treatise which would help the Vaishyas and Shudras 
to attain medium of entertainment. So he wrote Natyavir or Natyashastra, which gave an exclusive guidance upon how to perform or enact whatever happens around us in real life for the purpose of entertainment of the Vaishyas and the Shudras or the lower two sections of the society. What are the basics of Rasa? Rasa can be considered to be an aesthetic juice. Now, we know what aesthetic juice means. Rasa can be considered as an emotion, not a feeling. There is a substantial difference between an emotion and a feeling. Emotion is something that lingers, that stays. And feeling is something that is fleeting or that is temporary in nature. Rasa is not something that is for a minute portion of time. Rasa has to last for a longer span of time. Rasa is cultivated in the soul and is supposed to be realized with the help of stimuli. Now, Rasa is not something that is to be extracted from an external medium. You do not get Rasa by seeing someone else enjoying a Rasa. It is already in you and you have to realize it with the help of external stimulation. That is, something outward of your body would trigger something that is inside your body and you would realize that thing that comes from your inside. That is the Rasa Sutra. Vibhava, Anubhava, Sanchari Samyogat, Rasa Nishpatti. The result of every Rasa or the every activity that is related to Rasa is Rasa Nishpatti. That is what everybody is seeking in a drama. We will come to the understanding of Rasa Sutra in the next slide. The Rasa Sutra is the mechanism of attainment of Rasa Nishpatti. It is attained, Rasa Nishpatti is attained with the help of the stimuli, that is the Vibhava. The first step to get to Rasa Nishpatti is the external stimulation, that is Vibhava, which leads when experience, a distinct experience, that is the Anubhava. Now, Vibhava affects us in a manner that we undergo some experience. And then it is transmitted by a Sanchari Bhava. A Sanchari Bhava is a temporary state of mind that we undergo during we are experiencing something. And it also affects the outcome, that is the Rasa Nishpatti. It is necessary that a fair combination is done, that is Samyoga. A fair combination or a proportional combination of Vibhava, the Anubhava and the Sanchari Bhava is there. Then only the perfect Samyoga happens and a Rasa Nishpatti is exercised. What is Vibhava? Vibhava is the primary stimuli. It is divided into Alamban and Udipan. Alamban is the factor or the person which evokes an experience and Udipan is the circumstances or the situation in which Alamban stimulates more effectively. A very good example of this would be a dog. It could be called an Alamban. A dog in chain does not give you fear but if the chain breaks or a dog is not tied to a chain, it gives you a different experience. So an experience can be changed by the situation as well. A lion in a zoo is a different experience and a lion in an open field is a different experience. So Udipan also affects the situation. Anubhava, the experience incurred from the observation of Vibhava. We understand that? the primary experience, that of the audience. Now, each time we are seeing a movie or watching a play, we are always the people who get involved. Aristotle marked this in his work Politics. He said that each time there was some experience that was not of a person, but of the character or the protagonist that is enacting the person on the stage. For instance, each time we see a movie, we always consider what is going on the stage with the protagonist 
and with each and every character which experiences the same things that have happened to us in our life. For instance, for a person who is a servant at a home, if he is watching a play and he is seeing that there are various activities going on on the stage and a servant is being beaten, he does not start to watch all the other activities going on on the stage but he is intently watching the beating of that servant because that is something that affects him the most. He assumes the role play of a servant in there because that is the exact role that he has in real life. For a protagonist, a person who has fallen in love, a person among the audience who is in love would relate to that particular protagonist and would experience the same feelings that the protagonist is experiencing. So, Anubhava is not the experience of the character, but of the experience that the audience has relating themselves to that character. It is usually extracted from Bhava. Now, we are introduced to a new word here, the word Bhava. What is Bhava exactly? A Bhava is an emotion that we already have in our body. It is also called the sthali bhava or the fixed emotion. They are countably eight in number and they are something that all the humans share. This emotion is not only influenced by the vibhava. This emotional experience is affected by the sthali bhava in us as well. We have fixed eight sthali bhavas and they are triggered by the vibhava to give out and experience that is anapav. The Sanchari Bhavas, these are the transitory states of mind that come and go during an experience, during an anapava. These come from Sthai Bhavas and also affect the Sthai Bhavas. Let us take an example. If you hate someone, you pick up a stick and run towards that person to beat him up. Why you are running? You experience a couple of seconds when you tend to forgive him for what he has done or the feeling of hatred is suppressed for a couple of seconds. That momentary change of that wide experience of hatred is the Sanchari Bhava and it has the possibility to trigger the entire change of experience. For instance, that particular person starts bending down in front of you and starts to ask for forgiveness, starts crying and pleading for forgiveness. You stop there. A person who has bowed down to you and is asking for your forgiveness can change the entire experience. You stop there, you drop your feeling of hatred and start feeling differently. That Sanchari Bhava which was there in you a couple of seconds ago has triggered the entire experience to be different. Now you do not want to beat him. Sanchari Bhavas could be many, but Bharat Muni marked only 33. Sanchari Bhavas are affected by the Anubhava. They are, of course, affected by the Anubhava and have the possibility, have the ability to change the Anubhava as well. Now, there is a Bhav and Ras relation that Bharat Muni marked in his treatise. As I said, there are eight bhavas. They are Rati, Hasi, Shok, Krod, Utsa, Bhai, Juluks, and Vismay. And they are related to eight rasas. Rati is related to Shringar, Hasi is related to Hasi, Shok is related to Karna, Krod is related to Rod, Utsa is related to Veer, Bhai is related to Bhayanak, Juluks is related to Vivest and this mind is related to Adbhut. What sense they make are Shringar makes adoration, Hase is laughter, Karuna is grief, Radha is rage, Veen is excitement, Bhayanak is fear, Vibhast is disgust and Adbhut is awe. There was also an addition to the eight rasa that were marked by Bharat Muni. This addition was done by Abhinavgut. The ninth rasa that he introduced was Shantras. When Abhinav Gupta gave this rasa, he, he related it to a bhava called 
called nirved that means indifference we seldom come across this bhava or this rasa in literature because we do not have a sort of character we do not have a tendency to introduce a sort of character which is not affected by what is happening around him even in real life we do not see a lot of people who are indifferent to whatever is happening around them or what we can see is a person who has attained moksha so it's a very rare occurrence in literature what is samyogati samyogati is a fitting combination of vibhav anubhav and sanchari bhav it literally means union only after samyogati happens there can be nishpatti that is the accomplishment of rasa that is the destiny of the entire experience now how does samyogati happen <clears throat> it is realized through sattvic power consider the same example you were going to beat someone you stopped midway when you saw him pleading for forgiveness you stopped there you drop your feeling of hatred and you start feeling differently what is that different feeling exactly that different feeling would now change to either sympathy or a feeling of guilt in both the cases in the feeling of guilt you might experience tears rolling out of your eyes the sattvic bhava is that involuntary experience that you have that is inculcated after the sanchari bhava anubhava and vibhava are observed those involuntary experiences that your body undergoes are called sattvic bhavas and sattvic bhavas are the witness or let's say the proof of samyogati if samyogati happens you are definite to experience sattvic bhavas sattvic bhavas were also eight in number but they have been mentioned by bharat muni in history times so this developed an understanding of nishpatti with the help of this example her arms droop languid her palms glow reddening lifting of the water in jar her bosom still heaves as she draws deep breaths the sirsa blossom adorning her ear caught in the sparkling web of beads of sweat seizes its delicate play against her cheek with one hand she restrains her hair strain wire and we really release from its knot and then let me release her from her debt to you if i may now in this example we see that the alamban the person who is affecting the entire scene is shakunta the udipan are her body parts which have been described in detail not only the body parts are affecting the shanta here but also the activities which are going on with the body parts the rubbing of arms the pumping of her bosom the flower on her ear the sweat drop on her cheek and the wind which is flowing through her ear are all the parts of udipan the anubhava in this slide is experienced by both that is dushyanta and shakuntala they are feeling attracted towards each other and dushyanta is affected by lassitude that is the feeling of being transfixed into a particular point the bhava which is evoked here is prati the sanchan bhavas are harsha that means joy and rud that means shyness the samyogati here is shakuntala's beauty combined with attraction and rati that the shanta feels and the joy and coyness that both of them feel thus the rasa realized here is shringar thank you for watching my lecture i'll see you next time if you want any notes regarding this they are available on request do let us know did you enjoy the lecture or not in the comment section